count ifs and sum ifs. When can you spill these functions? Now what we're going to learn about in this video only works in Microsoft 365 Excel. And as we mentioned in the last video, most of us humans on the planet Earth, including me at my work, we don't have Microsoft 365 Excel yet. But when we get it, it changes everything. So in this video, we want to see the situations where you can spill a formula that uses count ifs and the sum ifs function. And what we learn in this video will work in other ifs functions, like max ifs and min ifs and average ifs. Now we'll look at the count ifs function first. And we'll look at a situation where we can't spill the results. Our goal here with count ifs is for each row to count how many t's there are. So in criteria range, because we're highlighting a range, and when we copy the formula, that range will move, we're not going to be able to spill this formula. So we're going to go old school here. We'll leave it as a relative cell reference, comma, criteria 1. There's the condition. And because we're going to manually copy this, we have to hit the F4 key, close parentheses, enter it, manually copy it, go to the last cell, and verify with F2. So the bottleneck here that prevented us from spilling it was the fact that the criteria range moved as we copied the formula. Down here is a different situation. This is the criteria range. And then for every new row, we have a new condition. So in this example, we can spill the results. Count ifs. And for criteria range, I'm highlighting that. And it's not going to move throughout the copy action, comma. Criteria 1, if we put just 0, there's no spilling here. It's when you put multiple items into criteria 1 that you can force count ifs or sum ifs or max ifs to spill the results. Because when you put more than one condition into criteria 1, it forces the function to deliver multiple answers. And because we're in Microsoft 365, when I close parentheses and hit Enter, the results spill down the column. Now notice, all the cells below the top cell are grayed out. The formula only lives in the top cell. And you can see because it's not grayed out. Now, there's a couple benefits here. We didn't have to lock this. We didn't have to manually copy it down. And we didn't have to verify it in the last cell. Now, up here, F2, I told you that we can't spill this. Well, there is a way to spill it. But you have to use some fancy new functions called by row and lambda. Now, usually when I get into this situation, I just do it old school. It's going to be faster and easier than this new method. Now, the new method does have a few good uses. So let's check it out. Ultimately, the problem here is if for any aggregate function, if you highlight a bunch of values, by definition, an aggregate calculation works on all of those. You can't just put a bunch of different rows in and expect it to spill and act on each row, unless you use the amazing new by row function. And what we can do in array is highlight the entire rectangular range, and by row will allow us to act on each row and deliver an answer, comma. Now, notice it says function. What we would like to do, and why Microsoft didn't program it this way, I don't know, is we'd like to put count ifs in here. And then by row, we just go bam for each row and calculate an answer. But that's not the way they programmed it. When it says function, and by the way, by row is one of seven helper functions that have an argument that say, hey, you could put a function here. Now, function values are new in Microsoft 365. They've never been in the worksheet before. They have been over in Power Query. But when you want to do a function value in the worksheet, you have to use the lambda function. It's specifically designed to work with functions like by row, by column, and other lambda helper functions. Now, we have to get lambda to communicate with by row and act on each row. And the way you do that is you define a parameter. 
And because lambda is sitting in by row, it'll know to go through each row in that range. Now you can name this anything you want. I'm going to call it R. Now we type a comma. And here's finally where we put our calculation. Count ifs or any other aggregate calculation that you want to spill. And criteria range. Remember, we want each row as a relative cell reference, so I just put R. And I know it's a strange construction. We have to put an R here that refers to lambda. And then lambda says, hey, I'll go row by row through that first argument. But that's the way you have to do it. Now we type a comma. Criteria 1, we select our T. Now the advantage is we don't have to lock it. So when I close on count ifs, that's the calculation. Close on lambda, that's the function. Close on by rows. And when I hit Enter, I don't have to manually copy it down, and I don't have to verify in the last cell. Now, most of the times, I just go with the old school when I get a criteria range that's going to change. But if you're making single cell reports where you want an aggregate calculation like this to spill, that is an amazing addition to Excel's arsenal in worksheet formulas. All right, now let's look at some ifs. Here's the situation. For grading, we have to add up the two scores in the numerator and then add up the max value. So this would be the total of that divided by 200. But here, I need to take that 75 and only divide by 100. So for the denominator part of this calculation, I need some ifs to look at each row and only add the numbers if the cell isn't empty. So we'll use some ifs. Now, some range, that's going to be these two values up here. And that max points range is not going to move throughout the copy action, comma. But criteria range, that's a relative cell reference that as the formula copies down, it's going to move to each new row. So that's the constraint here that makes this formula hard to spill. Now, because at this point I know I can't spill it, I have to go back and remember to lock this. So I hit the F4 key. Now I come to the end, comma. And what's the criteria? I need this sum ifs to say, when the cell is not empty, please add. And the cool criteria is double quote, less than, greater than, double quote. That construction works in functions like sum ifs, count ifs, min ifs, and others. And it will instruct sum ifs in these functions to add when the cell is not empty. So that's our formula. Close parentheses, Control Enter, and we have to manually copy. Then go to the last cell and hit F2, because we have both relative and absolute cell references. And when we manually copy, we need to verify both. All right, now here's an example where we can spill. We're going to sum for each one of these items. Because there's multiple conditions, I'm going to try to spill it. Sum ifs. Here's the sum range, comma, criteria range, comma, criteria 1. If I had one item, sum ifs delivers one item. But when I put multiple items into criteria 1, I'm doing a function argument array operation. That tells sum ifs to deliver one answer for each condition. So close parentheses. And when I hit Enter, I didn't have to lock. I didn't have to manually copy. And I don't have to go to the last cell and verify. Now, if you want this to spill, then we come over and say by row. There's the whole rectangular range, comma. The function is lambda. I'm going to call the parameter r, comma, and then the calculation will be sum ifs. There's the sum range, comma. Criteria range, that's the row by row. So we have to use lambda's variable r, comma, and then the criteria, this cool thing that means not empty. Close on sum ifs. There's the calculation. Close on lambda. There's the function. Close on by rows, and when I hit Enter, the results spill. All right, in this video, we saw two situations for sum ifs. Since we had a criteria range that was going to move throughout the copy action, we went old school because it's easier. We knew that we were going to have a hard time spilling. However, if we have multiple items in our criteria argument, 
and the sum range or the criteria range are not going to move throughout the copy action, then you can spill the results. Same with count ifs, multiple conditions, criteria range is not going to change throughout the copy action. Up here, that's changing throughout the copy action. So we're going to have a hard time spilling. Probably we want to go old school, but you can spill it using by row and lambda. Now, down here, here's an example of a single cell report where we do want to spill aggregate results. And if you want to see a video about these single cell reports, check out this video. All right, we'll see you next video.